put him in the right spot and make it visible, make, make him animate, do all that stuff for you. So that said, let's, uh, let's click this component. Don't double click. If you ever double click a component, you're going to go inside the component. And you can tell what you're inside a component by on the top left where it's a scene one and then it says something to the right of it. Uh, right now we are inside the dynamic mini component. That's not where we want to be right now. We want to be on the scene one component, just like this. Because if you double click and things get grayed out and you're in this component, anything you change here is going to be affecting every dynamic mini component. Which could be a good thing. If you're later, after you've followed this tutorial and you want to make your own menu based off this system, all you have to do is edit this dynamic mini component and add your own look and your menu will function exactly the same but it will have your look and you don't have to touch any code because all that's already done. So anyways, once you click this, make sure you're on scene 1, make sure you click your uh, dynamic menu, which is look at text build. On the right there's a properties box. Now on the top here there's an instance name. Now and when you name things for the project or for Forecourse UI, you have to uh, name very there's a, there's a system to it kind of. Now this because this dynamic menu is our main menu, I'm just going to type in main menu, no spaces, just main menu. And this is where the the system part comes in. And this is actually a standard with most action script and most flash things. Uh, this is called a movie clip. We're not I'm not going to go into what a movie clip is right now, but all movie clips should have be named underscore mc. So it's main menu underscore mc. Now when you click this again, if you click the stage, it goes to the stage probably as you click this. The, the movie clip here, the text field thing, it, sa it should say min menu underscore MC at the top, and it should say component dynamic menu. That's the, uh, the four course UI component that we just added in. Now, on the bottom right, you'll see on my screen, if you're using CS5, you'll have a property or a component parameters box, and you have all these properties here you can change. However, if you don't see this, it probably means this is either hidden, and you have to click this arrow here, or if this isn't here at all, you're on CS4. If you're on CS4 or any older version, you have to click your movie clip and make sure you're looking at the properties for it. But then you have to hit Shift F7, and that brings up this component inspector box. And if you're on CS4 under parameters, it's going to list these same properties, and you can work with them exactly the same way you'll see me work with them here. However, if you're on CS5, it tells you to use this box instead. Right? I'm not sure why they did that, but I think the whole Shift F7 was kind of confusing. So. So if you're on CS4 or older, make sure you have your main menu selected and hit Shift F7. If you're on CS5, just look in your properties box, it's all here. Now, you'll notice that under animation, like under component primers, we have this animation type. I've only made one animation so far because I have other things to do on my project than just Flash. But as 4 Course UI pro uh, develops, there'll be more animations and you can always make your own animation type, but we'll go over that later. Now, you can change this to none for no animation or fly in for some cool flying effect. Now, where's this button? There's this little pencil icon, and you get this, if you click that, you get this box called values. And this values is like a list of all your buttons. So, if for our main menu, we want new game, and I'm going to add another button by clicking this plus here. I'm going to call this settings, and I'm going to make another button, and I'm going to call this exit. And I'm going to hit OK. Alright? Now, I'm going to save this right now. And I'm going to go back to the properties. I'm going to do one last thing before I cut this video off because I need to keep these videos under 10 minutes. That way they fit on YouTube. I want to change the menu title to main menu. Just like that. We'll go for what button spacing does and first button Y. We'll go over that later. But uh, right now we'll just set these up. We'll hit save. And I'm going to end this down. Uh, we'll see you in the next part. That way. Okay. With our, with our main menu set up. Let's go ahead and add another menu. And we'll just. This will be our settings menu. And, all I have to do is drag that here. Now you kind of have to kind of have to remember which ones are which, but it's not that hard. Now for instance name, go ahead and make this settings underscore mc. Settings is the menu title name, and underscore mc is a code thing. Just underscore mc makes the component work. Okay. Now at the bottom, I'm going to change menu title to settings, and I'm going to change buttons to I always want to change the resolution, just like that. Then I want to change this to save settings. Then I want to change this last one to exit. Okay. That's cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and save. 
and nothing's. If I hit a, if I hit test with the FX media player with a skill form launcher, it's not going to do anything again. And that's because basically it's not set up right. Like, well, the components are there. It's just this holder doesn't know about them yet. So in order to make this component know about them, on the we have a timeline down here on the bottom left. Let's go ahead and uh, click a new layer. And let's uh, double click the new layer here and name it Actions. Actions of a, when we call a layer Actions, this usually means we just have a layer on the timeline that is just meant for our action script. But uh, just, I'm not going to go into where the timeline is, there's plenty of video tutorials about that. So uh, before we actually code this, we need to click our dynamic menu holder and give that a name too on the top right. I'm just going to call this DM holder underscore MC. It just makes sense that way. So DM holder underscore MC. Now I'm gonna click the first frame on our actions layer. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, the actions layer has this white little rectangle with a circle on it. Go ahead and click that, and then hit F. Okay, I just remembered I can't hit F9 because that would pause my recording. But uh, hit F9 or go to Window and go to Actions, and that brings up your Actions box. And this is where you type in Unreal Script for your, oh, well, for the first frame of your movie. That's cool. So in order for this to, uh, for our for our menu holder to work, uh, I'm not going to go over the basics of action script. Right? Once again, there's a lot of tutorials on that too. But all you have to type in in this box right here is dm holder underscore mc dot bind menu and then parentheses main menu, and that's going to bind our main menu that we called main menu underscore mc. We don't put underscore mc here. We just put main menu here to our holder. And then I'm going to copy paste this line, alright, I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to put settings here, and that binds our settings menu. And then one last thing, I'm going to type in dm holder underscore mc dot switch to menu, that parentheses, and I'm going to type in main menu again. I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to hit test on the bottom right with the scale form launcher. And you'll see our stuff is here. Now you might see a bunch of boxes because of the fact that I'm using a font that's not what we call embedded. To embed a font is to basically store all the characters of a font in the Flash document so that it knows that well, it knows uh, what they are and it can swap them out when it, when it's needed. But right now only a few letters are there. Only the letters that like some basic letters are there, but they're not all there. So in order to fix that, we need to go. To, to our library here and we can right click and go new font now the font that I'm using is a uh, Berlin Sands FB I'm not sure if that's a standard font but I have it and it came with right, like it was just here so I started using it and I like it because it looks nice so now I'm going to click all under character ranges and that embeds all the upper lower numerals and punctuation of this font I mean, we can click OK and we'll have a little font one pop up here. Then we can hit test again. And as you can see, our text is no longer there. And you'll see that, uh, is this the right? Is it already? Wow, apparently my code already has animation set up for it. Awesome. All right, I didn't, I didn't know I did that. All right, so um, yeah, with these three lines of code and you're binding this main menu and you're switching to the main menu, you have this already animated but main menu type of thing. And the components are set up to animate themselves and when you house over they pop out and they do things like that. And you click them they push in. So that's pretty cool, right? So uh with that there, we can now uh I want to end this video here again just to keep the video short. But now we can add in some basic functionality, that's a little bit of code, and now we can make the menu switch to another menu and we can make these buttons actually do things. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and I'm going to stop the recording and I'll see you in the next part.